Hello, I'm Stacy Gerlsberg, Product Manager for PCS7 for the U.S. market. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about ET200 SPHA and look at the actual physical components that make it up. So as you see here on the left-hand side, I've partially pre-assembled a rail so we don't have to go through all the screws and the connections. But, and if I want to start here on the left-hand side, you know, we talked about R1. We talked about a fully redundant Profinet connection, said we had two interface modules. Well, right now, I've got a redundant interface module, and there's one pre-installed with its bus adapter. You say, well, okay, what does that really look like? So, so here's the interface module. It just literally snaps in place, done. There's my interface module. And I talked about redundant power. Well, on each of the IMs, there's a place for power. So we just sort of have to plug in that little connector, and that gives me a place to bring in power. So power comes into both interface modules, and then basically it's ORed together and provides all the power for the module electronics that are in the rail itself. Now I need a physical connection to Profinet, and so we call that a bus adapter. So it's nothing more than a two-port switch. Um, this particular one is RJ45. We also have ones that, that are fiber, and actually one that's fiber and copper. Um, so literally all we need to do is plug that in, and this one actually has a little screw uh, to make sure it stays in place. Now if I look further to the right, that's the carrier for the I.O. modules. So I actually have one pre-installed, so this is the standard uh, terminal block where field wires would come in. So well, I, I'd like one of those options that you talked about using the D-sub. So, so here's a D-sub terminal block. Uh, has built-in uh, D-sub, and I can just take that anywhere I want, um, and I can install that, snap it in place, and it's done. Now, the D-sub, yeah, as I mentioned before, um, we've got uh, flying lead cables, so we can connect this straight in here, and then we can take the flying leads, various length cables, and we can go to whatever type of termination that, you, that you're after. In this particular case, um, I just want to go to a Phoenix terminal block. Can I do that? Sure. So over here on the right, uh, on the far right, we've got the standard Phoenix terminal block uh, for screw terminals for analog in, analog out, discrete in, discrete out. Um, it's got a cable that's already made up, and we can just plug that in. The connection's done. Now, for the discrete in, discrete out, AC inputs, AC outputs. Well, I've got a couple other... D sub terminal blocks here, and I'll go ahead and install one of those. You notice I've got gaps. This is fully legal, fully supportable um, within uh, a rail of SPHA IO. Uh, so now that's installed, and I can say, well, I want that to go to, uh, let's say, this block of relays here. So these are actually uh, 32 individual relays uh, for discrete output. Uh, in this particular one, the different modules are, uh, that are here uh, are actually relay, so it supports up to 10 amps. And so now that cable, um, as you notice, it's, it's kind of like a half a spider or a half an octopus, as it, as it may be. So it's got four connections to the four blocks and a standard cable, various lengths, and we can just connect that in, and we're done uh, from a cabinet installation perspective. Uh, another one, uh, we want discrete inputs. Uh, so plug that in. Come back over here on the right, I got another block of 32 relays that are actually for inputs. So this will take 120 volt AC on the input and be able to drive my uh, 32 channel DI module. So here's my 32 channel DI module and I can just plug that in, done. I can take my 32 channel DO module, plug that in, I'm done, and then I can take um, well, let's say an analog input card, and we could use that going to my D-sub, and let's say the other module that I had here was an analog in, discrete in, discrete out, and we can just plug that in. 